For over a decade, General Motors kept a mystery that could shake the conviction of even the most loyal consumers. A catastrophe that could have remained hidden if it weren't for the outrage of a group of victims and lawyers. Defects in components or assembly failures have always been present since automobiles became common, a natural situation, especially in older models, as vehicles, in essence, are essentially mechanical machines composed of interconnected parts that may have imperfections. Owners of cars, motorcycles, and other types of vehicles know that even with rigorous maintenance, we are always subject to some mechanical problem. However, the popularization of automobiles brought another issue, accidents. Currently, traffic accidents are a daily reality in cities and highways, caused by mechanical failures or human errors. Obviously, no one wishes to be involved in an accident, especially if there is a risk to life. But what happens when the vehicle manufacturer itself chooses to hide a defect that could result in a fatal accident? How does it feel to lose a loved one due to the negligence of an automaker? And what should be the cost for a company that puts its customers in danger? Today, we will recount one of General Motors' darkest episodes, a narrative that, at first glance, may seem like just a simple mechanical failure but ultimately exposes a colossal failure of human character, a scandal that has already cost the lives of hundreds of people. In 2014, the colossal American automotive company General Motors announced a recall involving several of its models, affecting over two and a half million vehicles that were suspected of having a defect in the ignition switch. This switch supposedly could turn off the car's engine abruptly and disable the braking and airbag systems, which could result in a fatal accident. This tiny flaw may have taken the life of young Brooke Melton. In 2010, the U.S. nurse lost control of her 2005 Chevrolet Cobalt while returning home on a highway. She collided head-on with another vehicle and died instantly. In the police report, the accident was attributed to speeding. However, for Brooke's parents, something didn't add up in this story. That's because the day before, the young woman mentioned that the car was stalling for no apparent reason. In 2011, dissatisfied with the conclusion, Brooks' parents shared their doubts about the car with Lance Cooper, a lawyer specializing in serious car accidents, who agreed to initiate a more detailed investigation into the case. He purchased what remained of the car from Brooks' insurer for $500 and began researching to try to understand what may have happened when she was driving. When he accessed the data from the SDM, a device similar to an airplane's black box that records the vehicle's operational data, Lance discovered that the car's speed dropped from 90 km per hour to zero abruptly seconds before the accident, which simply didn't make sense. Furthermore, the car changed from driving to accessory mode, which only powers the radio. Unconvinced, Cooper consulted a trusted mechanic who found that the car's ignition had been switched off about three seconds before the impact, causing Brooke Melton to completely lose control of the steering and veer off the road. The mechanic, Charlie Miller, also found bulletins issued by General Motors in 2005 and 2006 warning about the ignition problem in the Cobalt, which could cause the car to unexpectedly shut off while being driven. However, even with the technical evidence indicating that General Motors was to blame for the accident due to the component's failure, the automaker denied any responsibility or signs of manufacturing defects in its models for years. However, more and more reports pointed to the fact that something was really wrong with the models involved in the accidents. Not surprisingly, reports suggest that GM, in reality, not only was aware of the failures but had knowledge of them much earlier. In 2003, the company's engineers had already been warned of the serious problem that, in practice, was ignored simply to avoid additional costs to the automaker. Recognizing a defect and conducting recall seemed excessively costly for GM. It was cheaper to pretend ignorance. After all, what could go wrong? 
General Motors could have resolved the situation as soon as they became aware of the problem. The part was simple to replace and, in fact, would have cost the automaker very little, less than a dollar per vehicle. The ignition failure in the cars was caused by a switch that was inadvertently triggered, even the additional weight of a keychain could be enough, shutting off the car's engine abruptly, as well as the power steering and brake systems. In 2005, after receiving new reports of power loss in Chevrolet Cobalt models, GM engineers proposed a change in the key design to allow hanging objects without the risk of inadvertently pushing it. The company initially approved the new key design, but weeks later, the proposal was cancelled due to being a high cost. The following year, Delphi, the company manufacturing the part, proposed a change in the ignition design, which began to be installed in cars starting in 2007. However, the replacement of the part did not occur in the most effective manner, as the model number was not changed, leading to confusion on the production line. Thus, some new cars were equipped with the redesigned component, while others were not. In addition to the Chevrolet Cobalt, the Pontiac G5 and Saturn ION models, both manufactured by GM, also experienced problems with airbags and ignition, leading to accidents, including fatalities. Time went by, and General Motors persisted in ignoring the problem, which years later would become the biggest scandal in the company's history. The exact number of accident victims caused by the failure is not known, but in 2017, the Detroit Free Press published a report estimating 124 fatalities and over 250 injuries as a result of the problem. GM CEO, Mary Barra, admitted to the media and the US Congress that the company failed to take action to correct the serious mistake, although she couldn't explain exactly why the negligence regarding such a simple problem extended for a decade. According to Barra, the company's tough culture was the main obstacle to recognizing and rectifying the error as quickly as possible. General Motors was slow to take an active stance in response to the accusations, and the defective models continued to circulate normally on the streets until early 2014, when the company finally announced a recall. But for the victims and their families, it was already too late. In 2014, GM announced a safety recall that would replace the faulty ignition switches in over 2 million of its vehicles, along with offering free rental services for affected customers as the repair of all these cars could take months. By the time of the first recall announcement, the company acknowledged the deaths of 13 people in accidents caused by the faulty switches, but that number significantly increased as the case gained publicity. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA, had already notified General Motors in March 2007, following the death of Amber Rose, whose Cobalt's engine shut off due to the ignition problem, causing the airbags to fail during the accident. However, neither GM nor the agency conducted an investigation at that time. Months later, the NHTSA initiated an investigation into four additional fatal accidents but failed to detect the error since each case seemed to involve something different. When the scandal reached the US Congress in April 2014, the head of the NHTSA, David Friedman, stated that GM had not cooperated with the accident investigation, making it difficult for the agency to adopt a more decisive approach. That's when attorney Lance Cooper proceeded with the lawsuit for the death of young Brooke Melton. He convinced a former GM engineer to testify in a pretrial, which was crucial for the automaker to finally disclose the defect, but not before offering Brooke's family $5 million to settle the case and keep all information confidential. GM was punished for its negligence with a $35 million fine imposed by the NHTSA the maximum amount allowed by U.S. law. In the consent decree, the company admitted to intentionally ignoring the need for vehicle recalls. In response to the accusations, 
GM initiated an internal investigation and issued a statement acknowledging its responsibility for the accidents, but claimed that the negligence occurred not due to a cover-up of the problem, but to a misunderstanding of how the cars were built. Furthermore, CEO Mary Burra fired 15 employees implicated in the failure, including the engineer responsible for approving the switch, Raymond de Giorgio. According to the investigation, de Giorgio was one of the main individuals withholding information about the faulty switch. He met several times with Delphi engineers who urged for a solution but chose to save the company the expenses involved in replacing it. Unfortunately, this is a tragic example of how negligence and prioritizing profits over safety can lead to disastrous outcomes. General Motors' failure to appropriately address a known safety issue in its vehicles cost human lives and resulted in significant injuries, something that can never be fully repaired. I believe it is crucial for all companies, regardless of the industry, to prioritize the safety and well-being of their consumers as the highest priority. While costs are always a consideration in any business, they should never override safety. This is even more important in the automotive industry, where defects can have potentially fatal consequences. GM learned this lesson the hard way, with significant damage to its reputation and substantial financial costs. The fact that the company is now prioritizing quality control is a positive change, although it is one that should have been implemented much earlier. Ultimately, I hope that other manufacturers learn from these mistakes and ensure that the safety of their products is never compromised. Transparency, integrity, and accountability should be the guiding principles for all companies.